Welcome to Occupy Brooklyn TV. I'm Atik Zabinski. And I'm Leia Mondragon. Today we'll report on Occupy's visit to the Republican National Convention, the workers' occupation of Hot and Krusty, Occupy Wall Street's plans for its one-year anniversary, and we'll have a special interview with OWS tech insider Drew Hornbeim. On Friday, August 31st, newly organized bakery workers held an occupation of their workplace after management chose to close the shop rather than negotiate. Workers at the 63rd Street location of Hot and Krusty had been demanding such basic compensation as minimum wage and paid sick days. The closure means the loss of 23 jobs, including those of employees with as many as 12 years of employment with the company. Workers allege owners, including Mark Sampson, Evangelos Gavelos, and Nick Glendis, have a demonstrated history of wage and hour violations, intimidation, retaliation, and harassment of workers in several of their businesses, as well as a pattern of closing down shops and opening under different aliases to avoid legal and economic liability. Workers have filed charges at the National Labor Relations Board alleging that the company is closing the 63rd Street shop to intimidate workers organizing at other Hot and Krusty locations. The company owed several months' rent when it gave the Hot and Krusty Workers Association 11 days' notice of eviction from the property. The union, led by grassroots labor organization Laundry Workers Center, along with community members and a contingent from Occupy Wall Street, held an occupation of the workplace the day the shop was to close. NYPD was called and five arrests were made. Mic check! Mic check! This is a worker-led struggle! This is a worker-led struggle! They have asked for our support! They have asked for our support! And that's why we are here! And that's why we are here! This is going to turn! This is going to turn! Into an all-day occupation! All day, all week! All day, all week! We're gonna stay here today! We're gonna stay here today! Send a clear message. Send a clear message. That you cannot fuck with workers. You cannot fuck with workers. And that we are watching. And we are watching. So we invite you. So we invite you. To join us. To join, join us. Join the workers. Join the workers. Join the workers. Spread the word. Spread the word. Let it be known. Let it be known. That we are here. We are here. We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. Solidarity. Solidarity. Viva la huelga! Viva la Hoy quieren cerrar la tienda después de una lucha de, de a muerte de que no nos pagaban ni, ni el mínimo, muy por debajo del sueldo mínimo. Hoy desafortunadamente se dan cuenta y no les conviene porque a lo mejor han hecho dinero a base de nosotros con mano calificada y barata y lo quieren seguir haciendo. Es probable que quieran cerrar la tienda y posteriormente abrirla con otro nuevo nombre. Y la verdad no es justo, no es justo la verdad. La verdad no es justo y a la opinión pública, de verdad que si nos está viendo, nos está oyendo. Gracias por su apoyo al cuerpo técnico en el caso de ustedes. Gracias, gracias por su apoyo incondicional. So we need to start delegating some roles. So we need to start delegating some roles. So we can all work together on this and keep everyone safe. So we can all work together on this and keep everyone safe. And we, all, we also want to let folks know that this is happening in the community. And we also want to let folks know that this is happening in the community. Keep the sidewalk open so people should be on that side, people can be on this side, and we can't block the entrance to the door with people on the sidewalk. No, not a mercy. Just get some units over here. Yeah, I'm
have a donation box? You have a donation box? I um maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Storm Isaac could not deter occupiers from flocking to Tampa, Florida to take part in protests at the Republican National Convention. In advance of Occupy's visit, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security released a bulletin warning of possible violence by, quote, anarchist extremists, end quote, and even suggested that explosive devices might be employed. Police were outfitted with riot gear onlookers compared to Star Wars costumes, including horse protection equipment reminiscent of medieval battle gear. Nonetheless, all protests remained peaceful. Protesters built a tent city called Romneyville in downtown Tampa, recalling the Bloombergville occupation that preceded Occupy Wall Street and Walkerville from the state capital occupation in Wisconsin. It was fitting that one of the top RNC actions came during a speech from Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, which he gave at the Faith and Freedom Coalition rally. Participant Tyler Mitchell told Ruth Conniff of the Progressive Magazine that a group of community organizers from Illinois had been planning the action for weeks and came to the decision that Walker would be the optimal target. Mitchell emphasized how the governor's connection to the Koch brothers and his union-busting ways drove their decision to hone in on him. One year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street is coming up soon, on Monday, September 17th, and organizers are preparing to celebrate. Anniversary events will be held through the preceding weekend, with festivities including various pop-up occupations, a concert, and direct action in the financial districts. 
Added details like the call to action and schedule are available at s17nyc.org. We spoke with several organizers about what's being planned. S17 is sort of our, the way we describe September 17th. A lot of people are saying it's September 17th, it's the one year anniversary of Occupy Wall Street. It is the one day we can be most certain people will be interested in listening again. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that people are curious by reminding them we've never left, we've been here all along. You might not necessarily have had an easy time hearing about us because we haven't been in the same park we've used to be in all the time. The first day on Saturday uh, and the second day on Sunday are devoted to educational events to teach each other about what the struggles are and what's going on. Um, one of those days will be devoted to training, including nonviolent direct action training so that we, we all know sort of how to play our roles in what's going to happen on Monday, September 17th. So the morning is going to start with the bold strike at the heart of the problem which is the stock exchange, groups of 30 to 50 people going from intersection to intersection, potentially causing distractions or even occasionally traffic backups by crossing at inopportune moments and preventing traffic from going by. On S17, we have slightly different actions than the official uh, Occupy Wall Street. Our actions basically deal with connecting again with the 99%. The people who are there, right there, get to decide from moment to moment what their level of involvement is, what level of risk they're willing to take on, and whether they're going to leave police presence or seek confrontation with police. So if you were there, you wanted to cause a lot of trouble and you were okay with possibly ending up in jail, you'd behave one way. If you were there and you didn't want to get in trouble because you couldn't take an arrest or you weren't a citizen and you might get deported, whatever, uh, you behaved entirely differently. There's a separate action that's been called 99 Pickets, it's been called the People's Wall. So the basic idea by, about this plan is it will be a sit-down civil disobedience in front of the stock exchange. Yes, we will be at the financial district at S17, but we will be doing a teach-in uh, at 9 o'clock uh, on how to move your money. Uh, just as effective as a, as a blockade and shutdown of Wall Street, it's just as effective for us to get our money out of these corporate banks. And it's time for the government to let these banks fail, you know, and uh, start really prosecuting people that have wrecked this uh, economy and wrecked this system. And what they're acting as is like, like leeches, parasites on the rest of us, on the rest of the country. Instead of having capitalists invest their money to create things, uh, factories and jobs, they're using their financial power to extract a kind of a rent, to find out that point where we have to use their services and then take a greater percentage of the money for their own pockets. This is creating an unsustainable economy, both for, for us as individuals, for our country, and for the world. And they leave us with no choice. We have to shut that down before it's too late. And then, at the end of the action, we're going to turn our backs on Wall Street and seek our own solutions. So whatever that means to you, bring your conversation to the park. At that point, around noon, we're going to be done with civil disobedience for the day. We're going to be done with direct action. We're going to sit down and have some serious conversations with whoever wants to sit and talk with us. We happily invite you to come. Occupy the Subway is simply us going onto a subway and doing mic checks. And then, you know, a lot of times it's us telling personal stories, us telling uh, you know, how we may have lost our homes or how we may have been uh, evicted. You know, we go in there, we mic check, we talk to people, we pass out flyers, we truly engage people. And when we start talking about the issues, people unite with us and they definitely uh, support what we're doing. I've been on about four or five different Occupy the Subways uh, actions uh, for all of our major events and each time we've gotten standing ovations from the people and people have always taken flyers and tried to give us donations. And, you know, it's, it's very, very important. It's us being directly there with working people, with students, with the masses of people. It's not only, you know, effective tool, but it's also very fun because it helps us reconnect, you know, with the 99%. And it kind of lets us know that we aren't in this by ourselves and that we aren't so crazy, that other people are going through it as well. And we hope that, they, that the press will mention the issues that we're fighting about, that we're, we're, we're basically trying to defend the rights of people who are the 99%, who may have lost their jobs, they're living without health insurance, their kids go to crappy schools, they're, they're fighting for a way to live in this crazy world. Um, but we also hope that they take note that we did 
we did put a stop to business as usual, at least for a little bit, if we can stop Wall Street for one day, for one hour, for one minute, but well, that'll be a start, and we can continue from there. We don't know quite what the size and scope of it is going to be. It can scale as large as, say, we get 2,000 people. Then this thing they've called the People's Picket can completely surround Wall Street, not just the stock exchange, and move as a roving picket, challenging people as they go to work and saying, we are offering you this opportunity to repent for your sins. And then if they don't take it, well, after they've gone to work, we sit down, surround the stock exchange, and call for a citizen's arrest of all the bankers. If we get a smaller number than that, it might not have to be a picket surrounding Wall Street. It might just be a smaller, more localized action like was done on November 17th, where the seven intersections surrounding the stock exchange were occupied in a distributed fashion, and there was a sit-down civil disobedience that clogged up the area for hours. We are having a coordinating meeting. We know the deadline. We have to know what the size and scope of the action is. On Wednesday, September 12th at Liberty Plaza at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a final training and planning meeting to figure out the final details of coordination. We're hoping to know the exact size and scope of everything at that point in time to plan for Monday the 17th. Really, when we want to talk about what it means to productively invest capital and resources to make the economy a better place, we're really talking about the job creators. And if there's one thing we can say about Wall Street, they're job destroyers, not job creators. Surrounding the stock exchange and saying, we remember what you did. We remember the center of the problem. We're calling you out. We're going to bring you to justice one way or the other whether it's the government taking intervention or us acting ourselves, we are going to make sure that the system that they have propagated is tumbled down. But that one day, 13, even 14 hours, as I was told, uh, is not going to create the revolution or the change that we think that it's going to do. Uh, we saw what happened with May Day. Uh, we saw what happened with N17. Those were great days. We got thousands of people out. But the reason we got thousands of people out because we were actually reaching out to the 99%. It wasn't just unions. There was also other groups and all the GAs that had come together, you know, for those days of actions. And uh, I think one of the errors that we, we keep making, and I hope I'm not repeating myself, but, you know, these one-day actions aren't going to make the change that we think that they are. So it's a continuing in a struggle, and you know, hopefully S17 will lead to more deeper sort of actions. I think at the end of the day, what we're going to need to do is not only be in every community, but, but, but be providing some sort of service, some sort of program, uh, some sort of community, or being a part of some sort of community where the people can see and latch on to and say, yeah, this is the type of world that we want. We want the people in control, not the corporations. Well, it certainly looks like a lot of people are expecting this to be the big resurgent of Occupy's visibility, the thing that will uh, put an end to the rumors of our, of our death, the premature uh, rumors of our death. But uh, I don't know. How many, I have no idea if this is going to be big or a fizzler. What do you think? Well, I've heard some pretty incredible rumors myself, actually. Uh, the other day I heard that something is expected like 30,000 people by bus alone from all over the country are supposed to be coming into NYC. So that's pretty exciting. And that's just bus alone. And I mean, uh, there's also obviously the, the organizing efforts from websites like s17nyc.org. And uh, you know, they, they have some pretty awesome resources on there for ride shares. And there's also an Amtrak discount if you put in the plug in the discount code. So they're really trying to pull out the, all the stops to make sure people have ways to get out here. Well, that's a nice crowd estimate, and uh, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. So maybe people here, when they hear about all these people from out of town in the streets, will come out in mass as well. Hopefully. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Drew Hornbeim has been with the Occupy Tech Ops Group since the early days of the occupation. We spoke with him looking back over the past year and ahead to S17. I'm Drew Hornbein, and I've been working with um, the Occupy Tech Ops Group. Uh, right now, I'm mainly focusing on uh, doing, helping with internal communications and getting all of our uh, planning up on uh, our website for the 17th, which is s17nyc.org, uh, and uh, yeah, generally just doing tech stuff for people. 
Labs is is a is a is a group of technologists with uh, and and we're a very solutions oriented group. Uh, you know, my my feeling is that appealing to power, um, trying to you know, voting for one of the two candidates for president, uh, trying to get our House or our Senate to enact uh, real legislation that w would actually affect change, the change that you know Obama promised in two thousand eight, uh, is not is not going to work, and that we need to. Uh, own the the means of production, which is a very, uh, I think, socialist Marxist kind of idea, but that can that is that is, but that idea is actually taking place and has been taking place over the past twenty years, in on the internet in the technology world, and it centers around um, the principle of flow technology, and flow stands for free, libre, open meaning that um, the technology and a lot of technology that you use and everyone, who, anyone who's on the internet interacts with flow technology on a daily basis. And what flow, what, what free libre open means is that it is a tool that is free, doesn't cost any money, it's gratis. It's libre as in freedom. You can do whatever you want with this tool. And it's open, meaning that it can be it, anyone can look at the components that make it up, can audit the source code, can see what's what's going on, how the how the how the product works, what it does, um, and with those principles uh, taken taken outside of the internet, we you know that's the the road to. Uh, to, to solving the many problems that, that we face uh, today. And what, what TechOps has been doing is over the past year, we've been developing a package of, of free libre open source technologies to help activists um, and really any, any orga, or organizations that want to affect change. Uh, we've been developing the, the ideas and, and putting together the software that has been developed by people not involved in Occupy, people outside of Occupy um, who have been working tirelessly on these, these technologies. We've been, every, every piece of information about anything, about a, a war fought 500 years ago, about a, a celebrity, about a cartoon character, all the information now is on Wikipedia. It's the first place you go when you're trying to learn anything about anything. And that information is owned by all of us. Anyone can go in. And, and and add to the information um, library. So it so it isn't so it isn't controlled by by the wealthy and the the you know the so-called uh, experts in the in, in ivory towers aren't handing down to us information. We are creating the information ourselves. One of the, the challenges that tech ops has been facing is how to organize ourselves and how to how to sustain ourselves. And, and I think that TechOps will, will um, continue offering um, and developing services for activists. And we are going to be working with um, other existing organizations such as May 1st People Link, which provides um, hosting and web websites for, for activists um, across the world. Uh, and and yeah, we're, we're I, I mean we're just going to continue what we've been doing um, already, which I, I think has been one of the more successful uh, groups to come out of Occupy. Thanks for watching. That's our show for today. But don't wait till next week to get in touch. We want to hear from you. Tell us what you think of the show, what you'd like us to do different, and if you'd like to help out, we could use your help. So give us a ring: six four six five eight zero eight four four six or send us an email at info at occupypublicaccesstv.com.